Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint lilacs. Aren't they pretty? They're blooming all over New England this time of year, and their fragrance just takes me back to being a little girl and playing underneath my lilac tree at home. So today I'm going to show you how you can paint this little lilac and stick it on a card. It's so easy to do, and it only takes a couple of minutes. So, won't you join me? Let's get to it. Okay, so I have my supplies here. I have a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper that I have torn, so I have nice rough edges that I think looks really pretty. And um, I've got my brushes and a pencil, and I've got my regular standard large palette here. And um, I usually use this palette if I'm painting in my studio. So the first thing I wanna do is grab my pencil, and I'm just gonna sketch on a branch. And, um, I'm just gonna kind of just throw a couple of branches in there just to give me an idea of where I want my um, lilacs to be. And I'm gonna turn that upside down for me so you'll be looking at it right side up. And since that's a really easy, I'm gonna put a leaf on there too. I'm not going to um, draw it on a scrap paper and then transfer it. This is easy enough that I don't need to do that. All right, I'm keeping my lines pretty light so that they won't show up too much under the paint. So to make my purple, I am going to simply mix uh, my alizarin crimson. Now I have purple on my palette, but um, I want to show you how to mix a color because um, I'm a big believer that when you begin to watercolor paint, that you um, you mix your colors. So I'm using alizarin crimson because that is more of a um, cool red. And I'm going to mix in some, whoops, that's cobalt, some ultramarine blue. And that will give me a nice purple. And then I'm also going to make another purple, but this time I'm going to use my crimson. And I'm going to use some uh, Prussian blue or turquoise with it. And that will just give me a darker purple. And see, I arrange my... Um, my colors, my paints in rainbow order so that I always know if I'm getting a more green purple or if I'm getting uh, a more green blue or if I'm getting a more red blue. It just helps me keep my colors straight. Here, I'm going back into a little bit of the red. And that's just a duller. See how that gives me a more duller purple? And then I'll just have a little crimson on its own in case I just want to grab that. And I'll have a little bit of blue on its own, the ultramarine blue. All right, so this is what my palette looks like. And I'm going to load my brush up. I have a number six round. I'm going to load it up with lots of water. And I'm going to dip into my um, first purple mix, the ultramarine blue and red. And I'm going to start dabbing on some petals. I hope my hand's not in the way. I'm painting upside down, so it's a little strange. We're painting lilacs here. And I want the paint to be really, really wet. I'm picking up different shades as I go. Generally, now if I'm painting normally here, this is how I would do it. I'd have my brush pointed away from me, so I'd get those nice little uh, individual petals. And by picking up a slightly different color every time, it's going to give me a more natural look. And I want to keep that paint really wet because I, and you'll see why in a minute. And sometimes I have to go in and mix up a little extra color on the fly because I run out. It's okay that I'm going right over my leaf. I just want to make sure I have some definition at the, at the edges. And I'm just going to go in. Remember to rinse your colors, your brush between colors. And just add big gobs of wet color in there. Now, to get the uh, really pretty look of lilac, those little individual blossoms on a lilac, um, we're going to throw some salt in there, and that's going to give us that pretty look. And I'm using kosher salt, and I'm just going to sprinkle that on there and let it dry. Now, the wetter your paper is when you sprinkle the salt on, the bigger the bursts of light shapes you'll get. So while that's drying, I'm just going to kind of tap up, blow off the extra, extra salt there. And I'm going to switch over to my half inch flat. And I'm going to make a couple puddles of color. I'm going to go with sap green, which is here in my corner. 
I like to put the color on my palette. As you can see, my paint is dry, and that's what I do. I squeeze out my paint into my palette, and then when I want to use some, I just kind of make a puddle in the mixing area. That way I don't contaminate my colors, and that way you don't waste paint. Your, your paint will, will be there, ready to go. I'm just going to turn my palette, that way you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. And uh, this is a really easy way that I like to do leaves. And I'm simply going to, I just kind of squeeze, pinch my brush, get the extra water out. I'm going to load up half of it in green, half of it in yellow. And then, and it's perfectly okay to turn your paper so that you are, you can go in and grab and reach whatever you want to reach the easiest way. And I'm just going to make a couple little leaves here. You can put in a leaf wherever you like. Hopefully I'm in frame here. And this is just the perfect size to go on a card. Now for my branch, I'm going to go in with just a little burnt sienna. If my, uh, my paint doesn't seem to be coming out too dark, what I'll do is I'll spray it, spray the uh, well of color. Or just put some water in there and let it sit for a minute until it softens up the old pigment and then it gets plenty dark so I, I always let mine dry in the wells and then I go back in with water to reconstitute it and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of purple and that's gonna darken my brown and it is going to make my branches look realistic I did smudge my green there just stuck my finger in it a second ago so I'll just try to avoid that and I'm just gonna go in and throw in a few branches look how easy that is Now when this dries, you'll see the really pretty blossoms of lilac start to form. Now another cool thing you can do um, with watercolor paint is actually stamp with it. So here I have a red, red rubber stamp. It doesn't work so well with a clear, it works much better with the red. And I'm going to use my flat brush and I'm going to pick up some really thick paint. And what I'm going to do is I've squeezed the extra water out of my brush with my fingers. And I'm just going to grab some blue, some of the ultramarine blue, rinse off my brush, squeeze out the extra again, squeeze, 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 get some of my crimson, nice and dark. You want it really thick so that it will um, stick to your stamp and then I'm just going to paint it on. You don't have to be too careful about it, just paint it on there. And then you can either stamp it on watercolor paper or cardstock and I've got some watercolor paper right here. So I'm just going to press it right down there. And then I've got a really cool watercolor looking uh, calligraphy. And I'll put this all together in a card and show you in just a second. Oh, let me just um, see if I can bring this up a little closer. You can start to see what the um, salt does to the paint. It's starting to make these little bursts of white in here. kind of looks like snow. I'm going to let this dry the whole way and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, I just took my um, paper over to my heat gun and dried it a little bit. You can use a hair dryer. And now I'm gonna brush off the salt. You have to make sure your paper is dry when you do this or you're gonna smear your paint. So I'm just gonna gently brush it off and give it a little blow to get rid of the any of the extra salt. And let me bring that up a little bit closer and you can start to see the detail, see those little, uh, the flecks of texture that the salt gave it? Isn't that cool? Now to bring out a little bit more detail, I'm going to go back with my round brush. I'm going to mix up a little more purple. And I'm not going to have it too wet because I want to be able to keep some nice sharp definition. And I'm just going to kind of go in there and just kind of define the clumps of lilacs. Less is more, honestly, when you're doing this. You just want to give the impression of the flower. You don't need to paint every little blossom. You might as well just take a picture if you want to do that. If you're painting, I think it's, you know, it's fun just to capture the essence. We um, have a huge, well, growing up, we had a huge lilac tree in our backyard. And this is actually, I went down to visit my parents on Mother's Day. And um, I grabbed a bunch of lilacs so I could fill my mason jars 
with them. Just have them all over the house. They smell so nice. I'm going to just add a little bit of detail to the leaves. I'm going to grab some sap green, not too juicy. And I'm just going to go around, add a few little veins. I'm doing this upside down. I take a little bit more time. But I'm just kind of want to add just a little bit of detail, but not too much because I really want to keep this light and airy. And there you go. You can spend as much or as little time on this as you like. And there you go. That's how you paint lilacs. It's so easy. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.